Hello, this is Guava Moment here with the results for week four, which turned out to be a tough one. So, hydrogen, oxygen, how do you separate them? They only have, or hydrogen can only have one bond, oxygen can have two. We're going to need something to compare them against. So in cases like this, you're going to have your Waldos grab something, and they're going to hold on to that atom pretty much the entire, the entire time. So let's do this. So now you have both atoms holding, or red and blue are both holding something. From this configuration, red can input, blue can grab, and the two of them, that's what I'm doing wrong. I knew something here didn't look right. Okay, so let's sync right here. Red will input a new one, blue will bond them together. It happens to be, what happened here? Oh, because blue's running this way. So it happens to be an oxygen. So we can move it over here, then we'll head down. So once it's in this location, it's oxygen and we'll debond both. And output. So since we don't know what this atom is, we test it out, we bond it to both, we'll debond it here. Avoid collisions. Here we go. There we go. Now we've got it. So we'll grab something new. Now it's a hydrogen. So this bond, vertical bond, does not form. So right here, if we put a red D bond there, blue output there. So this first D bond. What the heck? Oh. Don't need that. Yes, we do. What am I doing wrong here? Now we got it. Now we got it. So we debond that, debond here. If it's a hydrogen. We debond there. It gets dropped there. Blue outputs it. If it's a hydrogen, so an oxygen, another hydrogen. There's an oxygen. It gets debonded there, but now it's still connected to blue. Debonds there and outputs it. So that's the basic idea between or behind sorting by bonds. You need to find a way to have one path do two different outcomes depending on what the input atom is. Now this system here will work for a completely random set of inputs including the first two. These are uh, the ones that red and blue are holding on to. It could be hydrogen or it could be oxygen. This will still work. If we know though that the first two inputs are oxygen we can speed things up a little bit. If you're still a little confused how it's, as to how this can work, here's a solution by CERN that's very simple. It's one Waldo, two bonders, that's it. Drop something that's known, an oxygen here, then you can drop something else here and compare it. Bond it twice, debond it once, since it's oxygen, this where the bond remains, so it does not get outputted. Then debond it again, drop the oxygen down, output it. Hydrogen. Try to bond it twice debond it once, now it has no bonds, it gets outputted. So uh, CERN submitted this to me as just kind of a novelty, one Waldo, two bonders, just to show how simply it can be done. So here's a more optimized solution. Since we know the both inputs are oxygen, if you have the... Uh, so I'll show here. Blue and red are going to hold on to the same oxygen the entire time. Let's just watch blue as it comes around. And uh, red and blue are going to work in tandem to input a new atom and bond it. Here is where blue will attempt to bond it twice. Then red can debond and blue can output. It will, if this was oxygen, it would be bonded twice and it would now still have one bond connected and blue would carry it down to here, debond it, and output it. So let's see like this. Double bonded, lose one bond, drop the oxygen on, down here. So this is a uh, better idea of how to sort by bonds. Hopefully seeing it in action makes a little bit more sense. This was one of the fastest solutions I received. This was submitted by me, also by WildM, Jabor, and Nethris for 128 cycles, 29 symbols. Now, uranium and plutonium. Since uranium can have six bonds and plutonium can have seven, that means to separate these two, at one point we're going to have to have the plutonium with seven bonds connected to something. Since you can only have three bonds to an atom, 
That means we're going to need to bond this plutonium to three other atoms to have at least seven bonds. What does that mean? Well, a lot of people, like American Hero, realized you need to build something like a uranium cradle. So he's got his uranium cradle here. This is the target atom. Well, he happened to know that was uranium, but you bring it in, bond it a whole bunch of times. Bond it again. Since it's plutonium right now, it'll remain bonded, and he swaps it out to the output and outputs it. Or grabs it, drops it, outputs. So like this, the uranium cradle can separate uranium and plutonium. This was uh, probably the most difficult challenge I submitted yet, but I have no regrets because I saw us. There are some amazing uh, solutions here that you're going to see. Oh, might as well point out this one. 829 cycles. Also, I should point out that a lot of the plutonium separation solutions we're going to see are legacy solutions and not necessarily that person's fastest solution. They're just kind of interesting ones to see. So this one was submitted by Nethris. It doesn't use the uranium cradle. It uses something that's kind of difficult to even understand. It just shimmies back and forth a bunch of times and somehow correctly outputs uranium plutonium. This is a weird one to have to... You really gotta sit and look at this and wonder how the hell this works. I guess it's kind of like using a uranium cradle except this uh, uranium, the red wall that was holding on to uh, is kind of acting as both bottom points here. So 638, get faster. Janderbilt did something I really like. He built a plutonium-tipped uranium sorting stick. I love this one. This is ridiculous. Saves a uh, time just rotating the whole uh, target atom all the way over in one go, then having to carry the whole cradle over. And something that a lot of people did is that once uh, you try to debond or sense uranium, if it's not uranium, if it's plutonium, it remains one single bond behind, and then swap it out. So one of the reasons I put the uh, quantum tunnels in here to make it a little easier to separate this out once you're done. 906, that's not as fast as the other ones, but looks pretty cool. Mr. Blarney also built the U-shaped uh, uranium cradle. He did one that uh, ends up being pretty cool looking in motion. Again, swapping out the plutonium when it's not needed. I think this is a faster one. 426, that's pretty good. And here's Jabor, who uh, places down three uraniums instead of building a cradle, just keeps them stationary and moves around the uh, target. Fairly clever for 651. Added space. Did something a uh, little weird, too. Sets up... Th uh, this is a weird thing. This is a... Uh, kind of just have to see it in motion. He chugs the whole thing around in a cycle. That's, this is a weird one. Let's just wait till there's another plutonium and I'll slow it down. So it seems once the center of the top one is a or your plutonium, then some weird things happen where this gets carried over and... Man, I don't know, but this thing is weird. Kinda slow though, at 1250, but like I said, not necessarily these people's fastest solution. Here's American Hero again, who uh, makes a slightly bigger uranium cradle and found a faster way to do it. So you see the plutonium gets stuck to this one, but uraniums get connected to this little extension and then swapped out, instead of swapping the plutonium out. Thought that was pretty cool. 518, not bad. Now this one was my solution, and I know it was terrible. 
because there is uh, something that you need to know to s make this a little bit faster. I designed this solution in such a way that I, there were, I knew there would be a much faster way. So the first six inputs were uranium, and then plutonium was the seventh. Let's continue on. Once we output the plutonium, then there's one uranium, so plutonium's the second. Then there are five uraniums before the next plutonium, then two uraniums before the next plutonium, and you end up with the uh, final sequence. Once you know the sequence that the plutoniums come in, you can do something a little bit sneaky. So let's build a state machine. State machine is a computer program that, for a certain input, behaves a certain way. So we want this sequence of uh, numbers from the previous, uh, that we know the plutoniums are. I'll just put them at the bottom of the screen so we always know where they are. Let's have red... Okay, we'll red will sync. Then input, swap. We'll swap it into the uh, zone here. And output if it's uranium. So we know that the plutonium is the seventh one, so we'll need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sinks for blue. If blue then grabs that, drops there, and outputs, this will output the seventh atom in the sequence into the Psi zone. So now, there comes the plutonium. I screwed this up a little bit. There. So, now we need this to go back and output and hit two sinks before the grab. Let's uh, just rearrange this a slightly bit. Okay, so we need ten unique paths, since there are ten outputs. We need the next one to hit two sinks. So, since there, we need ten paths, three flip-flops will give us eight unique paths. So we'll need four here. Let's, uh... I'll go like that, and we'll put some more here. All like that. How about like this? This will do the six uraniums and the plutonium. Then... no, it won't. Six uraniums, plutonium. Then one uranium, then the plutonium again. Now we need this path to go to five. So this one here, or five uraniums, then a plutonium. So it's six. One, two, three, four, five, here. So this path needs to go here. And as we'll see, are we lotsy? What am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. Ah. All these should be this way. There. Now it'll do the five, and then I'll put the plutonium. Then the next one is uh, two again. So we find out where we're going here, and eventually you build up so that all the flip-flops are going the right way, and in sequence. My final solution ended up looking like this. All the uraniums get outputted here, and all the plutoniums get carried up into the next zone. 259 cycles. That is much faster than any method of physically separating these. Now I know it's a little cheating a little bit, but building a state machine I thought would be a cool challenge for people. So let's see some state machines that you guys have built. Oh god, um, well, here's one by Wild M. There is no way you're gonna look at this and follow it. You just have to run and Know that, that what it's doing is swapping things around and outputting exactly plutoniums where it's needed. This was submitted by Wild M, so naturally it crashes when you solve it. 241! And here's one by Halfwit that does a little weird thing. It, uh, instead of swapping over the uraniums, it builds a uh, block out of them. And then uh, swaps over the plutonium. So there's two. This next one will be a big one. Eight! Woo! Six, and then five. Here's the ten block one, Ooh. and the next two outputs were plutonium. 
297 for half wit there. Here's Nethris with one that's kind of similar to mine. Red just goes in a loop and while blue goes around uh, flip-flopping and outputting as needed. Now this one's much faster because it doesn't use sinks and just has blue outputting as necessary. Red doesn't ever stop, so that ends at 181. And here's one by Cannabalk9. This one's even faster because red and blue work in tandem inputting. See, red only inputs and swaps. Blue goes around outputting. And then moving plutonium around is necessary. That means like every, what, two and a half cycles or something? It's ridiculous. It just ends up outputting something. 125! Did you ever imagine that you could get this, <laughs> this challenge down to this low? I, uh, I didn't. That came as a surprise to me. So here's one by Halfwit you know I'm gonna love, because it's a uranium snake. I love it. It's beautiful. It's crazy. It's amazing. Uranium snake. 518. Here's kind of a crazy one by Sibling of TB. It's half state machine, half actual physical sorting. So this is the state machine part of it. But now he's built an enormous uranium cradle and is going to physically separate the rest of them. Uh, based on the size of this cradle, are you compensating for something, Sibling? Good lord. <laughs> Look at that thing, that's huge! That's 508. And here's a, another crazy state machine by Jabor. Oh god, what is even going on? I don't know. 121! <laughs> that was the fastest solution for this challenge, so congratulations, Jabor. So if you could build a state machine for separating uranium and plutonium, can you build a state machine for separating hydrogen and oxygen? Well, yeah, you can, but there's a reason that this is not going to be faster. I specifically designed the challenge so that this one would be faster to solve by actually physically separating them. The plutonium, I knew it would be faster to build a state machine to separate them because there was such an overabundance of uranium and because I gave you the quantum tunnel. In this, because the hydrogen and oxygen are equally matched and because you actually have to physically transport them over, I thought a state machine would be slower for this solution. Uh, I only received three state machine solutions for uh, hydrogen and oxygen sorting. This one was created by Brewski, which I have to give him a lot of credit. Brewski's been uh, submitting solutions. He's almost one of the first people to submit solutions for these things. But he's uh, never really been in the top 16, or even really close, honestly. But he actually ended up building a state machine for this, which I was really impressed with. He was the first person to build a state machine. So I thought that it was a very difficult accomplishment. So I wanted to show this off and say congratulations on that, Brewski. And here's Halfwit, who built a state machine. But like I said, because hydrogen and oxygen are equally balanced, because there's no quantum tunnel, this is not going to be faster than my 128 cycle solution. It... What? Well, uh... Huh. Okay. So, um, I have to apologize. Turns out a state machine is faster for this challenge as well. This one ended up actually in second place. There's an even faster state machine out there. Oh, Cannabalk9, you and your crazy state machine. This is... this is a thing. I didn't realize that you could stitch things together like this and build a state machine out of that and have it end up be faster. I really do need to apologize for that. Oh my god, 77 cycles. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh. So yeah, hey Wildem, you didn't know there was a state machine. I didn't know you could get this down that low either. But yeah, so there you go. So I apologize for that. Luckily, there's only two people that submitted uh, state machine solutions for this. And, uh, well, we've all learned our lesson. Hope we all had some fun. And uh, down to some more traditional non-cheaty challenges for week five. This has been Guav Moment. I'll see you then.